Welcome back to a beginner's guide to Photoshop Elements right here as always on the freephotoshop.com website. In the previous video we looked at how things happen inside the guided edit and the quick fix modes. So in this video we're going to take a photograph and fix it using the knowledge that we gained in the previous exercise inside the quick fix mode. I'm back in the organizer environment at the moment here inside Photoshop Elements and to make it easier to find the image I want I'm going to come down here to the keywords panel and I'm going to expand the places category and then select London so we're only seeing our photographs of London inside the organizer over here. Now I can just look around until I see the image that I want and it's going to be this one right here this is the one I'm going to go for and then I'll select it and then over here in the properties panel I'm going to rename the image just so it's easier to find in the future I'm going to call it the dark lake just like so and I'm doing that as well so that when you open up the exercise files or the project files associated with this series you're going to see this particular image named in this particular way and by the way, now we've renamed the image, if we want to display the actual file name next to the thumbnails, we can come up here to the view menu and select the show file names option. Now you can see the name of the image. Okay, if I go ahead and double click the photograph to enlarge it uh, to the size of the screen, you'll be able to see why we need to edit things. We've got a few problems going on here and to fix them, I could just click the fix button up here or I could come up to the editor button at the top here and select the quick fix option or there's another way I can right click on the photograph itself and by the way if you're using a Macintosh then that would be to hold down the control key on the keyboard and then click with the mouse and if you're using a PC like I am here then just go ahead and right click the image and when you do that you're going to bring up a context sensitive menu so in other words, the menu will be different depending on what you're right clicking. Now I want to choose the quick fix option and Photoshop Elements will launch the quick fix editing environment just like so. Now down here at the bottom of the screen we have a project bin and it's essentially a place where we store open images whilst we're working on them here inside the editing mode. We're also going to be using it when we tackle the full edit mode but for now I'd just like you to go ahead and close it to give us a little more room and we can do that by either clicking the button down here called hide project bin or we can just click this little arrow just above the project bin to collapse it just like so. Now to resize the image we could use the zoom tool to either zoom in or zoom out of the image. We could also use this little zoom option down here at the bottom of the image window. The only trouble is it seems to be so difficult to get any kind of control because the uh, slider is just so sensitive to even the slightest of movements. So another way we can work is just to type in the amount of zoom we want. So here I'll go for 25% and hit the enter key on the keyboard. That's the return key on the Macintosh. Another great way you can zoom by the way and this is the way I generally use is to take advantage of a couple of keyboard shortcuts. So if you're using a PC you can hold down the control key along with the spacebar and then click on the image to zoom in. That's command spacebar clicking on the Macintosh by the way. And then to zoom out on the PC you can hold down the control key once again along with the alt key as well this time in addition to the spacebar key so that's control alt spacebar that we need to hold down and now if we click inside the image we're going to zoom out that's command option spacebar clicking on the Macintosh seems a little strange when you first do it but it's a really good habit to get into I've got to say another great little tip just before we start fixing this photograph is that you can hold down the spacebar on its own and then you'll get access to the hand tool so you can drag the image around anywhere you like as long as you've got that spacebar pressed. Just to let you know by the way, it's not something that you have to do but it's, I've got to say, another great time saver when you're working here inside of Photoshop Elements. In fact, I can use that technique right now to make sure the image is centered on screen and we're seeing everything we want to. Okay, now let's make this photograph look good. In fact, let's make it look great. I'm going to start things off by coming over here to the Smart Fix option 
And remember, this is our only opportunity to fix the image in one hit. And you can see that as we move the slider across, we're coming up with some really great results. I mean, we're certainly bringing out shadows in the trees, so we're making the areas of the image that were previously dark. We're essentially bringing out details in those areas. Now, I could accept the changes here and then tweak the results we've got by adjusting some of the sliders down here. But I want to show you as clearly as possible how these sliders are going to help us out here. So I'm going to just hit this Council icon at the top to cancel the changes we've made using the Smart Fix options right here. And now we can amend things on a more personal level, I'd say. So let's start off with the lighting. We know that the lighting in this photograph is poor at best, I'd say. I mean, the shadows are just way too dark, and even the highlights are, well, I'd say, they're certainly not looking as bright as you'd expect them to. So that makes for a fairly low contrast image. So I'm going to start by taking this light and shadow slider up to, well, I'd say just past the first notch looks good. And you can see, of course, that if I move this up, we're never affecting the highlights of the image. So the reflection on the water, for example, we're never changing the brightness associated with it because we're never amending the shadows. Just going to put that slider back to where it looked good and leave as is. Now, just for effect, I want to increase the amount of difference between the dark end of the midtones and the light end of the midtones. So basically, I want to take the midtones of the image and push them farther apart. And I can do that, of course, courtesy of this midtone contrast slider down here. And generally speaking, just slight movements of this slider are all that you're going to need to make a big difference. So if I move this up just one touch, you can hopefully see that we're improving the contrast of the image, so we're making it look a lot more credible. Okay, next we have the color controls. So we've got the brightness and contrast where we want them. Now we need to make the colors in the photograph pop out. And we're going to do that by first of all using this saturation slider to increase the punch behind the colors. And once again, a subtle approach is the best approach. You're going to find that a lot of times here inside of Photoshop Elements. You don't need to make particularly large adjustments to add realistic effects to the photograph. And you know something else? The only thing that I find frustrating with the quick fix mode is that we don't have any measure on the sliders. So I can't tell you exactly how much saturation I'm applying to the photograph, but that's okay, I guess. That's the beauty of video tutorials. You can see that I'm adding just a tiny bit of saturation here, and you can see the big difference in areas like the grass here in the foreground. We don't want to saturate it too much because then things are going to look unrealistic, and we don't want that. Next, I'm going to shift the hues a little, and that's because I want the trees in this area here to be a little more green than they are yellow at the moment. And the hues, remember, directly affect the actual colors inside the image. And once again, that's going to require just the smallest amount of shift here. And I'm moving the slider to the right just in case you can't see. Such a minute amount of difference there inside the image that you may not even be able to see any changes. But I promise you that it is there. Next, if you're feeling creative, you may want to warm the image up just a little by moving the temperature slider to the right-hand side here. And in my opinion, that's going to give the image the feel that the sun's just setting somewhere out of shot here, and it's casting a warm light over the scene. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a very slight effect in here, just for creativity's sake, if no one else is. I'm not going to do too much, but as I say, just a small amount of um, warming up of the image will do us perfectly here. Finally, do I want to add some sharpening? Do I want the image to appear more sharply focused? Well, I'd say in this particular example, no, we don't. And that's because we have a large area of water involved. And as you know, water isn't all that sharp. So for the sake of making these trees in the background stand out a little more, we're going to introduce an effect that we don't want on the water. So I'm not going to add any sharpening at all to this photograph. However, if you disagree with me, by all means, give it a go. That's the great thing about photography and image editing. What one person likes, the next person may not. So give it a go and see how you get on. OK, things are looking good, I'd say, inside this image. Let's take a peek at how the image looked before we made any changes. And I can do that very easily here inside of Elements with the aid of the view controls down here. So if I switch things over to the before only view and then back to the after only view, 
you can see that we've made quite a bit of difference. We can also take a look at the before and after versions together in either a vertical or horizontal setup. I'm going to check out the horizontal view here and then I can drag the windows around by spacebar dragging with the mouse just to see how the before version compares with the after version. OK, one last thing to do and that's save the image. So I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the save as command. Now you can see the original name of the image has been amended to include this edited one text just so we can identify that this image has indeed been edited. Then you can see that we're saving it into the JPEG format which of course is the format of the original image and then underneath that we get two options regarding the organizer. The first is asking me if I want to include the newly edited version inside the organizer. The answer to that is yes. Next we're asked if we want to save this image into a version set with the original. And once again I'm going to say yes and then I'm going to hit the save button. And Photoshop Elements is going to present me with this dialog box here just giving me some information relating to what a version set actually is. I'm going to click OK and then I'm asked what quality of JPEG I want to save the image at. I'm going to make sure that the quality setting is up to 12 and that we have baseline optimized selected. So in my opinion we're saving the JPEG in the best quality that we possibly can. And if you want more information on saving a JPEG and other file formats actually, then check out my guide to file formats available on the freephotoshop.com website. We've got some really useful information over there. For now I'm going to hit OK and Photoshop Elements is going to save that image into a version set with the original photograph. Finally, let me just demonstrate to you what a version set is. I just knew you were going to ask. I'm going to come up here to the top right and hit the organizer button to switch over to the organizer view and then I'm going to reduce the size of these thumbnails down just a touch so we can see what's happening here and you can see that the image we've been working on now has a grey border around it just as if it were a stack. Well it kind of is. Instead of being a stack though it's now a stack of different versions of the exact same image. So if I expand it by clicking the little arrow here, you can see that the version set is made up from the original photograph and the edited variation. A great way of keeping the photographs organized as well as ensuring that we're always getting access to all versions of the photograph here inside the organizer. Okay, that wraps up the fourth video in this series. In the next video, we're going to be entering the full edit mode right here inside Photoshop Elements. Thanks for joining me as always here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.